Saru, you obviously wrote the book, A Long Way Home. Do you feel that the film took a lot of liberties, or is it a very close adaptation of your book? Oh, look, it's an extreme um, close adaptation. Mm -hmm. It's um, something that we both actually wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that um, this movie is portrayed to, you know, uh, the real life events that it actually ha occurred. Right. And um, and why would you not? Because there's so much raw data. Um, the story, it's a 10 hour story and it's just amazing. And I think being with Seesaw Films and wanting um, sort of, you know, so earthy yeah. and so real uh, was, was really good actually. The fact that you found your village through Google Earth, it's just yes. astounding. Is that really actually how you found home? Yes, definitely. Google Earth is going to contact you as a, as a spokesperson, as I'm sure. Or I mean, as yeah. a yeah. <laughs> Incredible story. And now how often do you go back to see, you, your mother and your sister still mm. live in the same village, correct? Uh, my mother does, but my sister and my brother, they live in two separate villages. Okay, your sister um, and brother. Only a couple of hours away. Okay. Um, I've been back about 15 Times. So 15 times was, uh, the 15th time was a couple of days ago, um, three days ago. And, um, and I wanted to show them, you know, the film. And uh, my mum, um, my biological mother, she was sitting next to me and she was just bawling her eyes off. Oh. And um, I was holding her hand and, you know, she was... Did she um, see a... Tr uh, well, I guess I was going to say, did she see a translated version? But the whole version, uh, I mean, the whole beginning the, of the film yeah, yeah. is... In, in, the, in, in India, in, in the first in, yeah, half, yeah. Right. So, you know, it brought back memories of her little child and also, you know, the child that she had lost as well could do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, you know, extremely powerful for her and um, mm -hmm. she was so emotionally moved. Yeah. The movie touches gingerly on the very uh, upsetting issue of child trafficking, which mm -hmm. still occurs in India and really all around the world, all around. Mm -hmm. all around the world. Are you involved in any way in helping to stem that tide or what are your feelings about this? Well, um, firstly, sadly, that is the case and I'm forever thankful that Saru had intuition and insight to know that he was at risk in that regard because that is a real everyday fact for thousands of children on the ground that are lost in India. So it's, a, it's been very delicately handled, it's very um, kind in a way. Um, also the film uh, supports projects to help with that as in Lion.com and The Magic Bus. So there are ways that the film we hope will be able to support right. that issue with some money to help children in need with phone hookups at the stations and so forth. So we're really hoping that that's particularly successful and both Dev and Nicole are very actively promoting that. So it's it's a tough situation, but it is, a, as you say, a worldwide problem because across the world there are millions of children unaccompanied, uh, orphaned through war zones, right. and they are very vulnerable and I'd like to see those children go to the top of every refugee list Absolutely. around the world. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I couldn't have said it better. I mean, you know, there's uh, it's a global problem, mm -hmm. not, not just India, but um, it's um, something that I think, you know, the uh, production company and also the distribution company Weinstein wants to facilitate, um, as Mum said, um, uh, Magic Bus and also Railway Kids, yeah. uh, children, and. Um, and I think, you know, um, having that humanitarian side mm -hmm. to this movie and also, you know, um, Harvey Weinstein and Seesaw Films um, wanting to sort of help out, it's, it's, really, mm -hmm. it's really good. It's quite unique and profound that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, distribution and production companies are doing something like mm -hmm. this and we are so proud yes. um, of, of this. So it's, um, you've always, you know, got to have sort of an equilibrium and harmony in life. And doing this is, uh, it certainly facilitates that. Yes. So do you feel now that there, perhaps there were two sides of you at one point that are now reconciled? Yeah, look, you know, <laughs> um, one, you know, a life that I had in India and a life that I've got in Australia and uh, I've, you know, I've done the full circle really. Yeah, we've, I've, got, I've been reunited with my family and, you know, um, life is good. And what is, what is life like for you these days? Are you writing a new book? What is next for Saru? Well, you know, there's a lot of things, but the, the next thing we want to do collectively with Mum and I is uh, write the prequel, oh. uh, which is talking about 
uh, my biological mother and my Indian mother as well, as well as Sarosh Su, the lady that owns the, uh, the, the adoption home, mm -hmm. and how, you know, they're all sort of related, integrated, and um, their sort of hardship of um, from where they were to what they become, and um, I think that's going to be a really beautiful story. Sounds like a great story. We yes. can't wait to read it. Saru and Sue Briarly, thanks to both of you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Tony. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Love.